So let's talk about Biden's speech. This is the first big speech that he's really given um, to the country. Uh, and, you know, I don't I don't really think they want Joe Biden to speak as much because when he talks, it's very clear and evident that he's got cognitive issues and he very quickly also goes down <laughs> into a possible racist rant. Uh, so they're they're trying to keep him off television as much as possible. They're 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 not they're trying to get him from um, giving these sort of speeches and uh, coming up with terrible sound bites that that Fox News and any sort of conservative media can use against them. But with all that said, so uh, let's talk about what was in the speech. I watched all twenty five minutes this morning. Uh, but I'm not going to I'm not going to play it for you guys. <laughs> I don't think you guys need to hear a fucking 25 minute speech and me break down every single part of it. Uh, that's unnecessary. There, there, there are times where I've done that. Like I, I did do that for, you know, when he uh, attacked black civil rights leaders back in December. Um, and I did that specifically because people need to see it. Right. It's one of those things where, like, I mentioned it to some folks and they were like, no, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. And I'm like, there's a video. There's a video. And then when I just talked about it, I was like, that's why I got to just show you the video of what these people said and how Joe Biden reacted to it. Uh, because this is not a man that leads with empathy. This is a man that wants you to unequivocally uh, fucking love him and do what he says. It, it, you know, he's sort of he's sort of like a polite dictator. He's like, come on, guys, please do what I'm telling you to do. And if you don't, I have, you know, uh, armed guards that will come and break your legs. Uh, but please, I'm saying please, you know, uh, that that's sort of the way that he, he comes off. Uh, but he starts this speech by addressing all of the things that we've missed, uh, you know, weddings and anniversaries and graduations and this, that and the third. Uh, and and then he goes on to say, you know, we need to do more to stop the virus. And here's what we need to do. And he, and the first thing he says that we need to do is trust the government. That's what he says. You got to trust the government, man. We got a Democrat in office, Jack. So you got to trust it. The Democrats got your back, fella. Don't be a corn pop, dude. You know, but how, right? How can we trust the government? Pre-pandemic, uh, you had people that were in debt uh, that couldn't afford a $400 emergency, that were working two to three jobs and still barely making ends meet. You had people uh, that couldn't afford health insurance. You had people that could afford health insurance, but are now in medical debt that could afford health insurance, but because of the way health, the health insurance industry is set up, have to pay out of their, uh, they have to pay out of their ass for medication. And when when we talk to the government about, you know, how to solve these problems and we talk about Medicare for all, we talk about uh, universal health care, a UBI debt consolidation, more regulation on corporations and, and the banking industry, decrease the military budget and put it into more social programs, create new jobs, look for sustainable technologies, look for sustainable fuel uh, options. They bail on it. Right. So how can we trust you when you say, yeah, we're going to listen and we got your back. But every time we do that, you fuck us over. How can we trust the government that does that? Now, throughout the speech, Joe Biden does. Nothing to to help you trust the government. He doesn't address any of the real problems that people are facing on a day to day basis. He's just he just he just didn't. Uh, the, the speech was a lot of platitudes and patting himself on the back. That's what that's what a lot of the speech was. How can we trust the government when, you know, your your foreign policy is to make this the working class of a different country suffer because the leadership of that country won't let you come in with an army and steal their oil? America's foreign policy is just waving their dick around. That's imperialist dick energy right there. 
that's your foreign policy. So how can we trust you when you do that sort of stuff? How can you ask the world to trust you when you do that sort of stuff? How can we trust you when on day one, when you were supposed to pass a, a $2,000 stimulus check to go out to every American, you sent ground troops into Syria and started construction on a new base on the Iraq-Syria border? How can we trust you when you do that sort of stuff? Again, Joe Biden didn't address any of this in his speech. Trust the science. That's the second thing he said. How are we going to defeat the virus? Well, we got to trust the science. Well, motherfucker, you're not trusting the science. This is like, you know, it's you can parallel it to the Manhattan Project. Everybody, every scientist right now is telling Joe Biden opening schools is a bad idea. And you have fucking teachers unions. And by the way, the American the president of the one of the largest teachers unions in the country, Randy Weingarten, uh, is is uh, sitting on the board of the DNC. She's colluding with the Democratic Party. That's not what unions are supposed to do. So the unions are now saying you got to open schools. The scientists are saying no. And Fauci is saying no, but yeah, we got to get Americans back to work. So how can we trust Fauci when Fauci is coming up with ju juxtaposed statements like that? You're saying trust the science. And when the science is telling you opening schools will cause community spread, you're saying, nah, fucking do it anyway. You're not trusting the science. Or maybe you do, but you're not listening to the science. But what did Joe Biden say about the, um, uh, about the, 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 I'm losing my words. Joe Biden, when he when he was asked about how he would handle the pandemic, he basically came out and said, I will not sacrifice the economy. But he will sacrifice the people to the gods of capital. He will do that. Your life doesn't really matter all that much. Wall Street does. The military industrial complex does. The prison industrial complex does. Honestly, I'm, I'm very, very surprised that uh, he didn't put a law into place that you have to wear a mask indoors. Because then, you know, that would just give cops any reason to arrest people and it would help the prison industrial complex that he helped build. But who knows? We're, we're not even past the first hundred days yet. <laughs> that could change. So then he goes on and does the politician thing, right? Where he was like, I met this lady in Philadelphia. She's a baker in Philadelphia. She's a small town baker in the small town of Philadelphia. I went into a little bit of Cornell West there for a second. Sorry. I'm not a good I'm not a good impression person. That's not my Joe Biden, though. Like if I had to do a Joe Biden, it would be like I would have to squint. I'd, have, I'd just say the word Jack a lot. I'd just point at you and say, Jack. Come on, man. I met this woman. Okay, I met this woman, Jack. Wait, is the lady's name Jack? Very progressive. No, it's, it's not her name, Jack. <laughs> but he met this lady. She's a small business owner, and uh, you know he's telling her telling the story. And the big thing she said is, "I just want the truth." Right, and then he does the Joe Biden thing where he starts repeating the same thing a couple times, like like a like probably like four or five times too many. Like he's just like, I just want the truth. That's what she said to me. I just want the truth, Jack. All right, that's what. So so he said that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a president that tells you the truth. Well, great, but you already lied to us. <laughs> you already lied to us about getting a stimulus check directly into the pockets of the Americans on day one. You didn't do that. <laughs> you dropped it from 2000 to 1400 because technicalities. So why would you say 2000? You already lied about that. You said you were going to uh, be diplomatic as far as, as your foreign policy goes, but you already bombed Syria. You already sent ground troops into there. You're already building new bases on the Iraq Iran border. Why are you building new military bases if you're going to be diplomatic, bro? <laughs> Why aren't you lifting sanctions on countries that need medical equipment because they won't, you know, submit to the to to American imperialism? Excuse me. He's got mass deportations 
kids still in cages. Didn't you say you were going to get rid of all that? Didn't you say you were going to fix all that? You're going to be a president for everybody, except if you call out his record, then he won't be your president. Then he'll fucking yell at you and try to get you get rid of you. So, you know, if you're if you're really going to be a president about the truth, then you got to be honest about yourself. And no mention during this fucking 24 minute speech that he gave. Does he talk about how he's the architect of uh, mass incarceration? Does he talk about how he helped build the prison industrial complex, how he created a racist war on drugs to ensure that more black people were in prison than white people for the same offense? Doesn't talk about any of that. Doesn't talk about how he's voted for every war. If you were really a president of truth, you would address all those things. But he is not. Uh, eight minutes in, he starts stumbling. He he's you know it, it, he either forgets words or can't um, form them properly. And look, I have those issues, right? Like you guys have seen me fucking stumble on on these live streams, um, and and that happens from time to time when I forget the word I'm looking for or what have you. But this happens a lot with him. Uh, almost every time that he talks. I mean, when he uh, signed that executive order for, you know, oh, we're not going to renew any uh, corporate prison contracts. Uh, you know, the federal government isn't going to renew any corporate prison contracts, which, you know, got 0.1 percent, uh, something like that, or 0.6 percent or something like that. It's, it's such a low number that it's like, OK, this doesn't really matter. This isn't really a blow to the prison industrial complex. You're, you're just doing this as like a nice PR move because nobody really knows the details of it. But even that speech, I mean, that speech was four minutes. He started stumbling. And uh, I've seen a couple people on Twitter talk about how he's got a stutter uh, and how he like had to overcome the stutter and everything like that. And that's really great. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, good, good, good for him. He overcame something that he was struggling with. Right. I, I, I always hope that everybody can overcome uh, things that they're struggling with, uh, you know, but. Even if that is the stutter coming back, that still shows sign of cognitive decline. That still shows that his brain isn't all there. The fact that he forgets what he's talking about halfway through, that's not a problem with the stutter. That is a problem with, you know, early signs of dementia, possibly Alzheimer's. He's quick to get angry because he because he gets confused and doesn't understand what's going on. Can't can't. Um, he can't rationalize things that people bring up to him. These are signs of cognitive decline. I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm not saying this is a joke. I'm saying it, this as you're literally watching a man's brain stop working. And the Democratic Party, partly because they ran out of fucking options, because everybody that they tried to champion uh, over the course of that insane uh, fucking televised election, you know, might as well just be a TV show, the primary. Who's going to be the next Democratic candidate on ABC? Check it out, 8 p.m. This week, we've got Kamala Harris. Last time, she couldn't answer a question about why she laughed at a man on death row. Can she come back for that? This week, she'll be talking about Assad and Putin. Fucking Kamala Harris failed. Beto O'Rourke. I don't know why <laughs> that dude, like he didn't. Then they were trying to champion Pete Buttigieg. That nobody wanted to, you know, he just called himself the victor of Iowa when none of the numbers were in. Everybody's like, you're an idiot and you should fucking sit down. Liz Warren, she went after Bernie. Um, and uh, that, that lost her progressives. And then Bloomberg just showed up out of nowhere. And then what were they left with? They were left with Biden. And we're watching this man's brain fall apart. And the Democratic Party is like, no, 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 this is our guy. Eventually, I do think eventually they're going to uh, they're going to 86 him. Is that the right? Is that the right phrase? They're going to get rid of him. 86. Is that the right thing? OK. Uh, sometimes sometimes like you can tell I'm foreign <laughs> and I don't understand a lot of the colloquialisms because I'll say certain things and they're like, that's not. People are like that's not 
what you think it means. What do you think that means? Why did you say that? Uh, so I hope I got the 86 reference properly. But but no, I think they're going to get rid of him. And then Kamala is going to become uh, president, you know. Because then the Democrats get to prove that, oh, a woman can lead. And it's like the whole world already proved that. The, ent the entire world, countries that you claim are, quote, shithole countries, as Trump so eloquently said, they have had female leaders. India as a developing nation 40 years ago had a female leader. The UK's had female leaders. Germany has a female leader. Every other country has been able to do it. Except America, because America is not as free as you fucking think it to be. Because if we were really the country of freedom, we would be a lot more liberal and progressive than we actually are. So then, you know, we move on from the speech. Uh, then he starts touting how Johnson & Johnson is working with a competitor to make more vaccines. And the only thing I could think of was like, oh my God, it's socialism! Two companies are working together. They're sharing resources. The oh, socialism. <laughs> That's all I kept ringing in my head. Where he was like, it's amazing that in America, competitors can work together. It's like, yeah, because didn't, didn't capitalism fail? Didn't your fucking, uh, oh, we need competition because it helps the economy and competition is good. Didn't that fucking rhetoric just fail? Just kick you right in the ass? <laughs> All I heard, it's just the, oh, we got to be scared of the Johnson and Johnson. They've got the socialisms. Oh, somebody, oh, they caught the socialisms, you guys. Now, I will say, I know, I know we got some, we got some skeptics and agnostics and atheists watching the show uh, uh, that, that do tune into this. Uh, I will say, I did read the thing about how I think Catholics don't want uh, do, are, are saying don't take the Johnson and Johnson vaccine because they they did so they like promoted abortion or something along those lines. Uh, and the second I saw that headline, I was like, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> this doesn't involve God. I think God can sit this one out. <laughs> like I, I'm 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 pretty sure he's like I think the science got it. I'm gonna continue being on vacation. All right, you guys are good. All right, we'll see you in another two thousand. Can you guys figure out? Can you guys figure out how to be less shitty to each other? I'll come back when you guys are less shitty to each other. When you guys do that. All right, I'm going to go to Pluto, which, by the way, still a planet. Still a planet. So, oh, so this is this is the this is the thing that infuriated the fuck out of me. So he goes, everybody's going to be back. Like, he's going to put in this order where, like, every adult can be vaccinated by May 1st. On May 1st. You know, everybody's going to be eligible to be vaccinated, which, you know, that's fucking three months. Uh, is Yeah, three months, almost three months from now. And uh, he talks about how he's going to build this infrastructure. We're going to have all these new tools in place so you can find vaccine centers because we're making more places into vaccine centers. Right. Um it was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll uh, you know, we'll have all these new tools where it's going to be easier to register and find a place that's giving you vaccines. And right now, what I'm thinking is, why aren't those fucking tools in place now, motherfucker? You're going to do it at the end? You're going to build all these cool, awesome fucking tools at the end? Like you didn't know that we were going to have a vaccine rollout. Like, for, for the entirety of the year, Trump kept talking about how this is going to be the fastest vaccine ever fucking manufactured. And you didn't know that you would need logistics to fucking roll it out. Asshole comedians like me knew that. Why didn't you do something to build that? You're just going to build it at the end and be like, oh, look how great we are. No, but asshole, do it now. It should have been done for now. That's part of the problem. Everybody's sitting there saying, oh, well, we can't. It's so hard for us to get signed up. Yeah, it's hard for you to get signed up because they're using a, a fucking DOS system to schedule people. Why is it already done? Because he had to pump more money into the fucking military industrial complex. Raytheon needed to pay some bills. You know, you can't develop a new F-35 without making money, you know, diverting funds to the military. 
for fucks the entire world is calling for an armistice and america is the only one boosting their fucking military budget under biden Oh, and then this is the part where he goes independence from the virus. Yeah, I, I don't particularly understand that. Uh, he he comes out and he makes this big thing, uh, and he go and he and he says we're gonna gain our independence from the virus. And I was listening to that, and I was like, I'm pretty sure this is Bill Pullman's speech from Independence Day. Is that did he just do Bill Pullman's speech from Independence Day? <laughs> Because he was like, we want July 4th with our loved ones, so we're going to gain independence from the virus. I was like, see, you just ripped off Bill Pullman. Who's next? Are you going to rip off Jeff Goldblum? Because as a Pittsburgher, I can't fucking have you do that shit. If you rip off Jeff Goldblum, that you are, those are fighting words, sir. Them's is fighting words. You do not fuck with the Goldblum. Look at this. I have I have uh, I have gold bloom on the back of my phone. You do not fuck with the gold bloom. Genuinely, the weirdest person in Hollywood, I think. Then he comes. Then he brings up, uh, you know, uh, what what we're gonna get back to, right? He starts. Um, he he starts uh, listing off things that like we can start doing. Um, hold on, I gotta. Before we go, I gotta take off my robe. You guys, it's very, it's like starting to get real sweltering. I thought I could like make it. I was like, I'll make it. I'll make it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work out after this. I'll make it. You know, I'll, 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 I'll get a little sweaty and loosen things up. No, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm about to sweat through the fucking robe. Uh, and, and it's because I'm getting more animated and worked up as it is. So he, he starts bringing up things that we can start going back to, right? Uh, and he goes like, we can have vacations and we can go to the movies and have graduations and weddings and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He like lists off like 10 things. And it's like all the things, uh, that you have to spend astronomical amounts of money to. <laughs> like that's, that's what they, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, if you can spend the money to have a big wedding, if you can spend the money to you know have a big graduation party. i didn't have a fucking graduation party i had a couple of my buddies over uh and my mom bought us pizza and, and some soda pop and uh and we hung out and watched uh some anime that was my graduation party just a, just a couple of couple of friends just hanging out you know fucking around and then at the end of the night we went over to a different friend of mine's place uh and we played like video games till the odd hours of the night it's just, it's just one of those things like like who I I I know I don't think any working class family can drop a couple thousand dollars to have like a big graduation party, right? Like that is a very, in my opinion, a very privileged thing to do. But he, uh, that's all he's talking about. He's talking about everything that helps consumerism. It helps capitalism by people spending money on these industries that, quite frankly, I don't know if you need to spend that much money for. Um, you know. I'm not saying don't celebrate the milestones. I'm not saying don't have a great wedding, uh, but the wedding industry. I mean, seriously, like the when when uh, I got married, you know, I'm no longer married, but when I did, the first advice somebody gave me was don't tell them any of this stuff is for a wedding, because if you do, they'll raise the prices by thirty to forty percent. And it was true. So I kind of I I did that right. One of the places that I was we were trying to get a quote from. I, wedding same uh, went to a different spot didn't say wedding they gave us a better rate so it's just you know that's what they're going like this is the normal they want to go back to but really what he what he needed to bring up is look when we get out of this we're going to have some debt relief i know a lot of people's debts piled up and we're going to figure out a way to get rid of those debt we we already gave the bank so and so amount of money and we're going to uh help them use that money to you know get rid of debt for people that would be great again joe biden's not going to do that because you know he's he's buddy buddy with the banks he didn't talk about americans being broke he didn't talk about americans needing two to three jobs which either he knows and he doesn't care or he's just too out of touch to know that's what Americans are going through. 
And I would say it's the former because he talks to people like that small business owner in Philadelphia who just wants the truth and will never get it from Joe Biden. Look, the normal that he's describing is not for working class people, right? Uh, it, it, it is for rich liberals. It is for his donors. It is for people that can shell out a couple thousand dollars to his campaign. It is, it is for people that can drop 100K on a wedding like it's nothing. If you can drop 100K on a wedding and you walk away from it going, well, eh, that was like buying lunch, then that's who Joe Biden is talking to. Joe Biden's talking to you. If you're looking for a wedding on a budget, Joe Biden's not talking to you. This speech was never meant for you. If you can spend, t uh, you know, uh, a couple thousand on a big graduation. Joe Biden is talking to you. If you can spend 50 bucks a week to go to the movies for you and your family, you buy the movie tickets, right? It's like 10 bucks for the movie tickets. It's like, that's 40 bucks right there. And then you got to buy the popcorn and you got to buy the soda pops and the candies and all that. You know, these people aren't wearing fucking cargo pants filled with Skittles walking to the movie theater. These people are buying concessions. So you're spending upwards of 50 to $70 and you, and you can do that every week and you can go check out all the movies. Joe Biden is talking to you. That's who this speech is for. Average people don't get to do that. Dude, I did not go out. I mean, I was on the road all the time, but even when I got home, you know, I would go out every so often and buy a drink or two, but that's about it. I'm not going to a bar every night. I'm not dropping a hundred dollars on a Friday night. I, I didn't even do that when I had a job that would allow me to do that because I was so worried that, Oh, what happens when this ends? Right? Like my early twenties, I didn't go bar hopping. I would go when my friends would go, but like, it would be uncomfortable because all my friends were like, we're going to spend all this money. And I'm like, I gotta, I can do the one. I got the one drink and it's on special. I can do the, I, that's it. And then that's all I can do. He's not talking to people that have to work on a budget. He's not talking to people that, you know, are, are like, well, do I want to keep my, you know, this streaming service or that, you know, they're not, the people that have to share streaming services is not who Joe Biden is talking to. This speech is for the donors. This speech is for the rich. It's for people that can afford a $100,000 wedding like it's fucking nothing. That's who the speech is for. That's why none of the real problems are mentioned. That's why all of these sort of fun time tri trivialities are mentioned, right? Like, are we really concerned about going to the movies right now? Because I'm not. And quite frankly, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go back to the movies, right? I might go to the movies every once in a while. I got a good buddy of mine that likes to go to movies and I like hanging out with him. So I might go, you know, to the movie with him. But I, I genuinely haven't missed going to the movie theater all that much. What I've really enjoyed is having a small little get together and watching television shows and watching movies with my friends. Small group of people in an intimate setting. That's what I like. And, you know, and I know that's a personal thing, but I'm, I'm guessing I'm not the only one here. The movie industry and having big weddings and big graduations is like that, you know, these, these strange little rites of passages that capitalism has created. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe this sounds really mean, right? But I don't give a fuck if you have a graduation party or not. If for the rest of our lives, anybody that fucking gets through high school doesn't get a, a, a party and a pony with fucking, uh, you know, Shaq shows up and high fives your friends. Like if, if that never happens again, it ain't no fucking skin off my back, Jack, to quote Joe Biden. <laughs> Is that a Biden quote? Maybe it is. I don't know. It's a Jack at the end, so it probably makes it a Biden quote. This is this is really him signaling the donors to be like, hey, I'll get the peasants off your back so we can go back to, to, to exploiting them uh, to make ourselves richer. Okay, I gave them, I gave them some pittances, and then now I'm kind of letting them know, hey, it's time to get back to work, you lazy pieces of shit. All right, I got you. That's really what Biden's speech was saying. 
There's no mention of income inequality. There's no mention of people not having health care. There's no mention of uh, the issues facing climate change and how that affects communities of color and low-income communities. There's no mention of that. When this area floods and houses and basements get flooded, you think Joe Biden's going to come help fucking fix people's basements? Well, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That's why we have those jobs. He mentioned that, you know, the checks are going out. The $1,400 are going out. And then he goes, look, there's a family of four that makes $10,000 a year that's going to get $5,000 right now into their bank accounts. What does he ignore? Why is a family of four making $10,000? Why isn't a family of four making eighty or hundred k? Why isn't somebody making livable wage? Why isn't why isn't a livable wage like forty or fifty k a year? And both both people should make that kind of money. And if you're going to send a stimulus bill, a relief bill, you should make it to be to be the equivalent amount of a living wage. You're not asking why people are 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 desperately trying to get by on ten thousand dollars for a family of four. You're, he just because he doesn't give a shit. He just knows those are the numbers. Well, well, you can do it. He says, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yet he acknowledges none of his record. In fact, when his record is brought up, he usually screams at the reporter for bringing up that record. He yells at, uh, he tells people like Ed Fallon, who brought up, hey, what are you going to do about these pipelines that are going to leak? He yells at them and says, go vote for somebody else. This is who Joe Biden is. You can't say you're going to tell the truth and not acknowledge all the shitty things that you've done in your past. How are you going to tell us the truth when you can't even acknowledge your own past? The crime bill, creating the prison industrial complex and the mass incarceration problem, voting for every fucking war, championing segregationists, treating Anita Hill like shit. What about Tara Reid? What about all of the all of the sexual assault allegations that have come out against you? You can't tell us that you're going to tell us the truth and not fucking acknowledge that shit. And then get mad when we do. Trust and truth. Those are the two things that are, were brought up the most in that 25-minute speech. And this is the last thing I'll say. You can't trust someone who has the inability to acknowledge what they've done in their past and the damages that they've caused to the American people. And you can't tell me that you're going to tell the truth when you started your administration by lying to the American people. No questions. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I'm gonna look at your comments. Uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, I just thought that would have been a fun fun way to end it. Uh, Holly says thank you for sparing us for not bringing up the the video. You're welcome. I know a lot of people get mad, but <laughs> I I I've never seen people get so upset. But like I legitimately saw everybody getting so just viscerally upset when I played uh, his response to the civil rights leaders <laughs> in December. Um, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't take any questions. This was not a State of the Union. Uh, and no, he will not give us Medicare for all in order to help stop the, the virus. Uh, and, and Holly says, Democrats have your back with a knife in it. Yeah, they, 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 they bail on you pretty much uh, every, every single time. Mimi uh, says, uh, saying he would veto Medicare for all if it passed the House and Senate doesn't smell like empathy to me. Well, uh, Mimi, I'm guessing you're a millennial, uh, such as myself. Uh, and as we all know, Joe Biden has no empathy for millennials. OK, he 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 has reserved his empathy for for a select few people uh, that uh, uh, they own Comcast. Uh, they uh, are are an, uh, you know, on the board of Exxon uh, and people like that, that uh, you know, uh, they, they might be on the board of Raytheon. Those people he has empathy for. 
Okay, so he can't just be delivering empathy. Look, we're on a track to lose 100% of the empathy in like 10 years. Okay, very limited resource. All right, we're just not making enough empathy for Joe Biden to just give it out willy-nilly to a lot of people. Okay, he's got to be very cautious. Uh, and until we can find a sustainable source of empathy, I don't think uh, Joe Biden is going to just be able to give empathy to everybody, especially uh, millennials such as yourself. <laughs> Trust the science, uh, then ban fracking, quit fracking with uh, <laughs> quit fracking with our environment by Biden. Yeah, as someone from Pennsylvania, I got to say that was a big issue. Um, you know, central Pennsylvania being being what it is, it's it's sort of a, a, a red portion of the state. Um, and that was a narrative that was pushed so hard. And I had to just be like, guys, you're going to want to vote for Joe Biden as conservatives because he is he is like the Republican candidate. You know, we have a Republican candidate and then we have whatever Trump is. Uh, so. Uh, Mimi says, honestly, uh, I don't believe he has a stutter. It was never brought up a. Uh, his first two times running for president, it never came out until people started noting his cognitive decline. It all seems PR to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly know the history of that, but it's just what I've seen kind of floating around. Um, and yeah, it could be used as an excuse. It could be used as as a as a PR front to to mask the cognitive decline. But even then, if he's battled with stuttering all his life, I mean, I have friends that. Um, you know, I, I have a there's a comic by the name of Aaron Chastine, very funny kid. Uh, he has a stutter and he addresses it on stage. But I have talked to him about how he handles getting over his stutter. And yeah, it takes a little bit of work. And, and he has mentioned that if he drinks a little bit, sometimes the stutter will come back. Right. And because he's not focused on um, his his um, the way that he speaks. Yeah. So. To me, even if it is a stutter and he has overcome the stutter, right, the fact that the stutter is coming back shows cognitive decline. It It is proof that his brain is not doing as well as the Democratic Party claims that it is. So, uh, yes, 86. Thank you for confirming that, Holly. I appreciate that. Uh, Biden's walk off at the end was awkward as fuck. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that because... The video I saw, there were there were people that were, you know started asking questions, and he just fucking peaced out, and the screen went to, uh, you know the the end uh, little frame that they put up there, and uh, I I think this one might have been the second most awkward walk off. The first awkward walk off was uh, uh during the January sixth insurrection riot thing that happened at the Capitol. Um, he gave out this big press conference and then, you know, he walks away and then he hears people asking questions and he just turns around, takes a half step towards the microphone and just starts screaming, enough is enough is enough. And then he pieces the fuck out. And that was really awkward. And I remember watching that with my girlfriend. I was like, that's weird, right? Like what he just did was super fucking bizarre. <laughs> so, yeah, I, and I think that we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, he's not going to take questions um, because those prepared statements that he has are basically what he can get through. And if he goes off the cuff and starts answering questions, we all saw how bad he is with press interviews. Uh, that was pretty much confirmed with, um, uh, during the, during the campaign. So I think they're, I think they're being very cautious about letting him on screen. Uh, America is number one in heart disease, obesity, and prison populations. Yes, agreed. <laughs> uh, oh, Aiden, you have information about the Johnson and Johnson thing. The RCC objection to the J and J vaccine was due to it being derived from an aborted cell line from something like over forty fucking years ago. Oh, was that okay? Was that the thing? Okay. Um, so they'd rather ha let more people die then promote something that supposedly came from, quote, an abortion. Uh, and to be fair, the church uh, itself itself said, fuck all that, it's fine. But a fringe group of Catholics are getting worked up. Okay, so the, so the fringe group is what kind of made the big news about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, gotcha. Okay, cool. And thank you for sharing that article. I will definitely have to take a look at that. Um, uh it's 38 years old, a millennial. I believe it is. Yeah, I believe right now it is because my sister and I are both millennials and she's she's older than I am. Uh, barely. Yes, that's a confirmation there. Uh, Gen X for the win. <laughs> 
Well, Joe Biden has empathy for you guys. He's reserved the empathy for you guys. <laughs> uh, no, I yeah. Uh, Mimi says I, I'm no way downplaying those who uh, actually suffer with stuttering. No, no, I I don't think that you are. Uh, I I understand what you're saying that you know there hasn't been any history of him talking about this, uh, and you know I think politicians that kind of go through something like that you would think that they would kind of talk about it a little bit more. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. He's, he's never brought it up and it did come up whenever people started talking about his cognitive decline. So uh, Kathy, good to see you. Uh, and, and, you know, you can always catch the, catch the stream later as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said hello and, and drop by. Uh, Aiden says he, he might've had a stutter as a child, uh, but it's, uh, return is a definite sign of decline. I had a stutter as a kid too, so I uh, I know it's something I need to watch for. Yeah, uh, that's that's kind of what I think is probably the case there. Um, and now they're kind of using it as an excuse to to reject the cognitive decline when uh, more than anything, it's proof of his cognitive decline. Um, and, and and that's part of the reason again is why they're probably not letting him take questions from the press. Uh, so, but I don't know who's like not telling him like, or, or not telling the press to fucking stop asking him questions <laughs> so that he has these awkward exits, uh, popping over on Rockman, Fred, uh, exactly huge profits for big pharma, even if the injections make the folks, folks sicker. Yeah. And there's evidence of Pfizer doing that, uh, in several, uh, several occasions, uh, I mentioned this yesterday. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Wagner asked a question, and uh, I basically said like that's the problem is when corporations put profit before the science, profit before curing something. That is why you can't um, you can't trust these corporations, and people have a little bit of trepidation surrounding the vaccines. And again, that is something that I hold, I very much understand. Um, so uh, Fred goes on to say, trust the government, where have I heard that before? Yeah. Uh, and you're you're asking, have you have you seen the raw data? Children are simply not a high risk of dying from COVID without other health issues under 45. Very, very low risk, too. I agree, but I still would rather not get it. Um, and I know there's a lot of data that that is saying, hey, kids might not be as susceptible to this thing. Um, or their, or their, uh, like Sarah's saying that here is uh, a primary tr vectors of transmission. That's what I've heard. Um, so uh, I'm not sure. When it comes to kids, it seems like the data is, it kind of goes back and forth. Because in the beginning, they were saying, well, the kids aren't getting it. They're, they're just transmitting it. Um, and there is data showing that they, they're, they're community transmitters. Because uh, every time that they've opened up a school, the kids have transmitted to the staff and to the parents uh, and people in their community. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's difficult. My, my view on it is uh, look, you had, you had a year, you had w a, a plenty of time to figure out virtual learning um, and, and come up with a, with a, a, a couple of different standards of using that. So instead of opening up the schools, uh, had you thought about how to have virtual lessons um, and uh, help teachers in that way, this wouldn't be that big of a problem. The problem that a lot of teachers are having, and I interviewed a bunch of teachers in regards to this, is it's the back and forth, right? It's the back and forth of saying, it's safe, it's not safe, it's safe, it's not safe. Let's do in person, let's do virtual, let's do a hybrid. Let's do... And it's just like, they can't teach that way. The kids can't learn that way. The teachers are having a hard time teaching that way. So my, um, my view on that is you had plenty of time to figure out a contingency plan. Uh, and you didn't because the government wasn't giving any answers as to how long this pandemic and this lockdown was going to keep going. Now it's showing that if you open up the schools, there's going to be community spread. Uh, you, you know, there's a lot more that you schools need to do in order to maintain safety and things of that sort. Um, so in, I think in terms of community spread uh when the schools are open they're seeing that it, it you know the numbers start spiking in some areas um so that's that's how uh i, I that's how i see it i'm again I'm, i might be wrong i'm just kind of going off of the information that I, i'm able to find there as well uh but you know again you can't open schools without vaccinating kids or, or vaccinating teachers and vaccinating parents um 
the other part of the plan should have been, how are you going to take care of work at home parents? Are you going to adjust the work day? Are you going to provide families with some assistance? None of that was put into plan as well. It's just, they just didn't give a shit. Uh, you know, other countries, um, other countries came up with a plan, but you know, America didn't. Uh, Sarah says Biden opened Biden. Pelosi says it all. <laughs> Is that something that she said? <laughs> Oh man, uh, that's that's a very funny quote. If that is something that she legitimately said, uh, and Sarah points out that there's a difference between stuttering and articulating words. Uh, yes, I, I agree. Um, like I said, my my buddies uh, in, in Atlanta, a very funny comedian by the name of Aaron Chastine, has talked about it on stage, um, and and he we've had a, a lot of conversations about uh, him going through the process and struggling through and and overcoming some of the difficulties that he's had. Uh, and he's a very funny kid, by the way. If you're if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, you know when things open back up, you should go check out Aaron Chastine. Um, uh, can't can't speak highly of that kid enough. Um, but you're you're right. Uh, I I you know will stumble over some stuff. I, I don't particularly have a stutter. Uh, I think my brain works faster than my mouth can my mouth can communicate sometimes, so that it. You know, so I have a hard time like forming the sentences because my my brain is three sentences ahead of uh, <laughs> where I need to be. Uh, and that's just an issue that happens sometimes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Holly points out asymptomatic carriers. That's that's a concern as well. Um, and not likely to die, but a potential for long-term effects uh, are still scary as fuck and nothing to take lightly. Agreed. That's another thing that, uh, you know, I've had, I've had friends my age that have talked about getting COVID and what they had to go through and how the hospitals in some cases didn't take care of them. Um, and, you know, now it, climbing up two flights of stairs for someone that is far more physically fit than I am, that does theater tech and all of these other things, can't go up two flights of stairs without being winded. So, Again, my choice is to not have COVID um, because of the long-term effects. And now we're seeing that the kids are also seeing some uh, long-term effects as well. The MISC uh, is what they're seeing in kids. So the reality is uh, that this virus is presenting more questions every day. Uh, it's presenting new problems every day. And the reality is we're not do we probably aren't doing enough to to figure out the solutions because again uh my my major issue with a lot of these things is that we do have a system that puts profit over science that puts profit over progress that puts profit over curing a disease um rather than just putting up stopgap measures a lot of capitalism is putting up stopgap measures uh so that's my concern over it, but as long as they're not making people pay for this vaccine, and you know, if we need to take it every year, that if Pfizer or Moderna comes out and he goes, "Hey, we got to take this vaccine every year." By the way, it's eighty bucks a shot. Okay, now we have a real big problem here, you know. Uh, so that's that's my concern. So I I hope that kind of um clears up a few or or at least gives you an idea of where I'm where where I'm coming from and where a couple other folks are coming from uh you know and and this is what I kind of like about these discussions is even though Fred and I and Fred and a few people watching the stream might might have some disagreements nobody is kind of screaming at each other and uh we're we're being very respectful and that's kind of what I like about these streams so uh I appreciate you guys doing that Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. 
there you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.